welcome back we're going to continue so far so good i hope everything is going great now what are we going to do we're in illustrator and we're going to learn a little bit more about the line and how can we start doing drawings okay but the first step is really important at the top menu the ones that is right here we're going to define some specific things that I need you to do before we select the tools that we're going to learn on this video. First, where it says the white area right here is fill color, relleno. Please select this one. The one that has the cross line in red means that there is no color, okay? Now, for this one, please select black. You can select red if you want to, but we're going to start from the basics, so black is going to be really useful and the stroke keep it in one point this is the weight of the line there are some um, numbers that are already available we're going to see all of them and see the difference uh, when we are trying to send a message because depending on the weight of the line is the message that is going to be sent okay so this is like the first step now this is going to be called toolbar this is going to be called upper menu and everything that is on the right are windows if you don't have it like i do don't freak out. Please go to the top menu, window, workspace, and select essential classics. This is going to show you all the tools that are available. The good thing is that you can select and name your own, like create your own workspace. But as a suggestion, do it after you already know how the tools work and how you're going to be using them in the near future. Okay? Because right now it's like maybe you have no idea when you're going to use a symbol, you know, and you're going to delete from the options that are going to be seen. That doesn't mean that it's not going to be available. It's just like hidden for a defined time. So for now, Essential Classics is going to work. Second step, if you have a Mac, press Command R. If you have a PC, Control R. This is going to make this ruler appear. Why this is important? If you click and hold the mouse, you're going to be capable to define the unit that you're going to be using. Remember, in Mexico, they usually use centimeters in the United States, inches and so on. So depending on the country that you're working with, this is the um, unit that you're going to select. Why this is important? Because we are more um, into that unit measurements, you know, and we're going to be easy to define, ah, oh, that's one centimeter. Or, ah, that's one inch. You know, in my case, I am, um, I was born in Guatemala and I learned everything in inches. So for me, for example, inch is this to this area. This is how my teacher taught me. And that's why I usually have rulers that are centimeters and inches because I have to adapt this, uh, the metric system that is used in Mexico. But that's another story. So. This is going to be helpful so we can have an idea of the space that is going to be taking in all the artboard that I'm, you know, I have as a reference right here. So if you don't have any page, remember that you can create one. You can come here to the button and click it and then you have another one. Okay. So right now I have two pages. What I'm going to do now, the toolbar usually is classified in the use that you're going to give to any tool. That means the first ones are for selection, the other ones are for drawings, and the other ones for transformation. Usually, when you leave the mouse over a tool, a small video is going to appear. And this is good because it's showing you two important things, how you're going to use it and the shortcut. For example, right here, if you press A, A, you're going to see that, ah, this is how I can get it using my keyboard. Okay. If you click learn more, a tutorial is going to be open. So it's good. I mean, in my case, uh, sometimes I need to work and it's like, oh, I don't want the video right now because it's going to take my time. But if you're learning, give yourself the time to figure out like, okay, this tool works for, remember that not all of them have a video. As you can see here, this one has, but this one does, uh, this one has it too. Okay, we are going to see all of them and I'm going to explain them. So for now, what are we going to do? Let's go to the top menu, view, and we're going to select something that says show grid. I am using this because I want you to help and 
to understand how we can create lines that are going to be, you know, straight lines, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 45 degrees, 135 degrees. But that doesn't mean that you have to use it. You know, if you don't like it, don't use it. But as this is the first class, it's like if we're going to learn how to draw instead of using a pencil, we're going to use the mouse. So we're going to start with a tool called line segment. OK, a line segment is going to be defined by a beginning and an ending. That means it starts with a point and with a point, as you can see on the video right here. How does it work? You're going to click, hold the mouse, and when you release it, this is going to be the result. Now, one important thing, if you want to have a straight line, you have to press shift. In Spanish, it will be mayúscula, OK? So if you want to have straight lines, in 180 degrees, this is how you do it. If you want to have vertical, you define the beginning and the ending of the line. This is just a simple line. And why this is important? Well, because maybe you want to do, um, I don't know, a poster that is going to have lines and you want straight lines. In case you don't press shift, what is going to be the result? Take a look to this. It doesn't mean that you are DC. It means that you didn't press, you know, shift and that's all. Now, if I want to have in, you know, angles 45 degrees, I press shift like this. Again here from the beginning to the end, I started here. And in case I don't use shift, I'm going to have something like that. I'm showing you my hand so you can see that I'm not pressing shift. Okay. Now, one secret. Well, it's not a secret because it's available for everyone. Every time you see the toolbar, you're going to see at the corner that there is something that is in white color. What does that mean? It means that you have extra tools that are hidden, okay? Because the software has grown the past years that they give you so many tools and they have to grip them, you know? So it's going to be easier for you to find what you are doing in a specific um, idea. As we're talking about lines, this is going to be just about lines. So if you click and hold it with the mouse, you're going to see that you have all this available just by clicking and hold it with the mouse. I'm going to select arc, arc tool. Instead of doing it straight, I'm going to do curves. So one important thing, if you press shift, this is the result that you're going to get. Depending where do you draw it, for example, here I'm drawing from the top, right to the bottom left. This is the result that I'm going to get. If I don't press shift, I can have something like this. Okay. Now, why this is important? Well, because you can have different um, results. For example, I can have for this area, I'm starting from the top, you know, and let's see here and here. There you go. Depending where do you start is how you're going to end it. Now, how or why or when do I use this? When I'm doing an illustration, for example, for eyelashes, for eyebrows, or when I'm going to create a texture that is going to have this. Now, you can see that just below this window is going to appear. And as this video was recorded in 2024, it means that artificial intelligence is important. OK, we're going to see that at the end of the semester, because right now you're starting to learn how to walk. Once you're running, I will show you how to run faster. OK, so if this is available for you, don't get panic. This is just an option that is going to be available for you. For me right now, I'm going to hide it because it's not going to work. How do I do that? I click the mouse and then um, hold it and select hide bar. OK. Once I have this, as you can see, it turns like it has a frame, a blue frame. This is telling me, like the icon that is right there, that the object is already selected. So the black arrow that you see right here is for selection a complete object. Now, what people don't know is that you can transform it even though you have selected it. Like here it says, well, it's a selection. But if you go to the corner, you're going to be capable to rotate. When you see that icon, you know, the arrows that are curved, that's for rotation. When you come to the corner, 
and you see these arrows is for changing the size. If you press shift, mayuscula, you're going to keep the proportion, okay? If you don't press shift, this is going to happen. You're going to distort it, unless that's the main reason or your main goal. You make the decision how you're going to enlarge it. The thing is that sometimes you enlarge and sometimes, you know, the result is like the face is too skinny and, or too fat. It depends on what you're drawing, okay? Now, I've been a graphic designer since 1994. Yes, 30 years ago. Yes, your teacher is old. Yes, but she doesn't believe that she's old is like right now. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be old in 40 or 50 years, okay? So, in 40 years, uh, we'll, we'll see how the Adobe Illustrator works and if it, it exists, but for now, and considering my past, I never used the spiral, rectangular, and polar, but maybe you're going to use it, and that's why I'm going to show you how they work. So for now, I'm going to move these elements to the top. Let me just move them here. If you want to select more than one object, for example, I want to move these three, you can press shift mayuscula and you can move them wherever you want okay i'm not holding it anymore shift was just for selecting so for selecting more than one element press shift i'm going to select the spiral the spiral is going to work like this you're going to be capable to draw this type of um, figures <laughs> A, if you want to add or include more circles, it, here's the way that you can do that. When you double click it here, sorry, when you click it once and then you click it here in the artboard, click, select the tool, then click the artboard and then release, you're going to be capable to select how many segments you want and even the orientation that you want. The radio, remember that the radio is from the middle to one side you know, when you were studying math, I believe that you remember this. So this is the result that you're going to get. The segment means how many lines are going to be available in this illustration. As you can see, I don't know if you can see the blue, let me put it like this, these blue spots, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's telling you how many points are for this. Now, how can you use it? Well, you can use it with the snail, like the video is showing here and maybe you're talking about Leonardo da Vinci, you know, or maybe you want um, to talk about art. Eh, I don't know, you will find the use for it. Now, this is a spiral. You can see that you have the orientation to the left, to the side, and how many segments on the radio and so on. The one that is called rectangular is going to make a rectangular grid. Automatically it's going to give you this option, but if you want to do something different, Remember to have the tool selected and then just click it here once and you can select how many uh, dividers do you want. For example, I'm going to put it like this, two and two. And here you have the dividers, two dividers, two dividers. So maybe you're going to do a table. This is how it's done. It's not the same result as using Excel, but it, it gives you the opportunity to give like a small texture to this area, right? And the last one, polar grid. The result is going to be a circle. If you want to have a circle, perfect circle, you have to press shift. If you don't press shift, this is going to happen. <laughs> so press shift. And again, if you want to define different quantity of dividers and so on, just remember to have the tool selected, click it here once and then select how many dividers do you want if you want to have the fill grid, that means it's going to apply color to it and so on. And here I have it. Okay. Now, uh, I haven't seen any use for it. Maybe the projects that I have selected are, were not involved in using this type of tools, but maybe you're going to find it. I mean, maybe you want to do a texture. Maybe you want to do something, a logo, you know, that is going to be divided here with colors and so on. Maybe. We'll see. So this is the line. Remember that it starts and it ends. It doesn't continue. It has a opening position and ending position. So if you want to make, um, I don't know, um, 
a drawing of this, for example, lines are not going to be useful. Why? Because here's a curvature that continues and go here. Okay, so the line, maybe I'm going to use it for this area, for this area, or even for this one. Okay, so this is the line segment. And remember, if you have any question or doubt, let me know. I'm here for you. Have a wonderful day. See you in the following video.